In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of might, give of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. People must think of us as Christ's servants, stewards entrusted with the mysteries of God. What is expected of stewards is that each one should be found worthy of his trust, not that it makes the slightest difference to me whether you, or indeed any human tribunal, find me worthy or not. I will not even pass judgment on myself. True, my conscience does not reproach me at all, but that does not prove that I am acquitted. The Lord alone is my judge. There must be no passing of premature judgment. Leave that until the Lord comes. He will light up all that is hidden in the dark and reveal the secret intentions of men's hearts. Then will be the time for each one to have whatever praise he deserves from God. The Word of the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. If you trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live in the land and be secure. If you find your delight in the Lord, He will grant your heart's desire. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Commit your life to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act, so that your justice breaks forth like the light, your cause like the noonday sun. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Then turn away from evil and do good, and you shall have a home forever. For the Lord loves justice and will never forsake his friends. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord, their stronghold in time of distress. The Lord helps them and delivers them and saves them, for their refuge is in Him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia! Your words gladden the heart, O Lord. They give light to the eyes. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees and the scribes said to Jesus, John's disciples are always fasting and saying prayers, and the disciples of the Pharisees too. But yours go on eating and drinking. Jesus replied, Surely you cannot make the bridegroom's attendants fast while the bridegroom is still with them. But the time will come, the time for the bridegroom to be taken away from them. That will be the time when they will fast. He also told them this parable. No one tears a piece from a new cloak to put it on an old cloak. If he does, not only will he have torn the new one, but the piece taken from the new 
will not match the old. And nobody puts new wine into old skins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins and then run out, and the skins will be lost. No, new wine must be put into fresh skins. And nobody who has been drinking old wine wants new. The old is good. He says, The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the Gospel reading today shows the scribes and Pharisees question the fact that the disciples of Jesus act differently than those of John the Baptist. But Jesus indicates that the question is, not what the correct manner of life should be, but rather how they are responding to God. This question of the practice differences between the two group of disciples is not of primary importance to us today. But what Jesus goes on to say, some new wineskins in this perspective is, the remark about needing new wine skins for new wine seems to be a justification not only for the way his disciples act but also for the fact that he is something new in this world and he implies that this latter fact in itself call for new religious practices those last two sentences of the Gospel, though, are striking in how they seem to go off in an entire new direction, almost contradicting what had gone before. If the old new wine is better, why do we bother with new wine? Why not stay with the tried and true, the law? the temple, and the current religious structures, simply because such wineskins have served their purpose and have weakened with age. The older wine that they carried has been popular and is hitting an end as well. Does this mean anything for us? With the situation now, the pandemic, the economic and political crisis, and so on. We exist in an age of change, like the world has never before seen. And we are more accustomed to changing, growing, and leaving good things behind. We might hold a certain nostalgia for the safety and dependability of those good things offered, but we press on in many areas nonetheless. We have to ask how our religious practices, our standards, our entire lives may transform from good to better. And by doing so, we are also transforming our faith an understanding of God's love better and meaningfully. Let us offer up our prayers and petitions to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us, Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen.